Hello to Satwe, everybody. <laughs> and welcome to another video. Uh, we're on Mushroom Hot Rock High Road. I realized I forgot something, didn't mention something last episode. If you've been playing along, just a quick uh, mention of it. In the previous episode, just before we came to this area, we cannot return now. Let me uh, just make that statement. This guy says, we're sealing off this area for the operation. All passage will be denied. Okay. Uh, so we can't go back anymore. There's this guy here. He says, here, take this and try and stay out of our way, okay? He gives you a remedy, so thank you very much for that, bro. Um, but yeah, we can't go back. Now, in the previous area, just before that stuff with Seymour, there was actually uh, a crusader I never spoke to right near where the cart with the sin spawn in it was. Um, and he says, hey, would you like to make a donation to the cause? Uh, and you can offer to give him gill. This is something I knew I wanted to avoid for this playthrough and completely spaced actually mentioning it to you guys. If you give him 100 gill, they say thank you for your uh, donation. It never changes the story no matter how much money you donate, so don't worry. Basically, it's just like a merchant with hidden wares. Because if you give him 100 gill, then he gives you an item. He says, thanks for the donation. Here, have something in return. And he gives you a uh, weapon for Waka called the Scout, which uh, is just a ball that has sensor for 100 gill, right? You've already got some, so you don't need to worry about it. Uh, if you give him 1,000 gill, then he'll give you uh, an Ice Lance for Kamari as well. And he'll say, here, you can have this too. Um, and this is just a weapon for Kamari with Ice Strike on it. Again, which we don't really need to worry about. Particularly not in this area, as far as I can remember. And especially not since I'm making Kamari a mage. And lastly, if you give him a whopping 10,000 gil, which is what I did on my first playthrough. Consider, right, 10,000 gil to that guy, 10,000 to Awaka. All this money for uh, Blitzball players. Like, we just, we, we couldn't even afford it on this playthrough. Um, if you do that, you get a ring for Yuna, which is sort of interesting. It's got two abilities on it called SOS Shell and SOS Protect. And these are actually powerful abilities. It means when she goes in yellow health, she takes way less damage from magic and physical attacks. Which is cool, but actually, Yuna's not going to be in that much yellow health. And it's definitely not worth the 10,000 gil. So I personally don't recommend using that guy. But he is there and, you know, I, I just feel weird not mentioning it. So look, they've really upped the ante here. This is pretty, pretty scary looking. What we're going to do is cheer on Titus. Just because, if you notice, everyone who's on the field right now uh, actually do a lot of physical damage and don't take much physical damage. So dark attack is going to be important. But thankfully, both Kamari and Waka have it. So we can get the double darkness going on these two guys. Uh, Kamari survived. Thank God for that. Good job, dude. So he'll put a dark attack over on this guy. Nice, 300 damage, it's not too shabby. Uh, and what we're going to do is quickly swap Auron in to deal with this Voiva here. So there you go, finally we're fighting these guys. This is what we had in our like mock demonstration battle with uh, Auron before. Uh, and these guys have both got darkness on them. So let's just kill, 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 I suppose. Uh, I'm just using the sphere grid, guys. There was something I didn't mention, too. Do you remember I told you guys how Titus could grab extract power and Auron could grab, grab extract power? While I was talking about key spheres and stuff, there was one thing I, I never pointed out. And, you know, my discussion on key spheres was so long already. So I'll just do it here, right? We got a level 1 key sphere, okay? But they're actually higher level locks. So this here was a level 1 lock breaking the way into steel and use, right? But there are higher ones. So where Auron actually begins his path is here, right? And he has power break, which is the ability you've seen me use a lot of times. Now, if he actually he goes earlier on his path, you'll see it's blocked by this level 2 lock that blocks the way. This level 2 lock. Very interesting. And actually, uh, this would open him up into this area here with a lot of magic defense, and then two level 4 locks. Level 4 locks you only get right at the end of the game. But if you can break through both of these, you can actually get this ability here called Full Break. And what Full Break does is it's like tons of Auron's debuff abilities all in one. It's like a super end game thing for Auron. So his grid's actually really kind of fun because he starts here, he completes his entire path, and then once he's finished his path, you can be like, right, do I want to move him on another characters or what? Or you can return him all the way to the start again and get the super OP ability right at the start. Now, obviously, if you were using a different sphere grid, that might not happen. This is just the expert sphere grid. But I think that's awesome. It's uh, really cool. So here you guys can see now, uh, Kamari has learned Cure, so he can now heal people. Really awesome. And he gets to take use of this strength sphere that Yuna originally, I said, didn't want to go for. So he'll be going for Lulu's stuff soon enough now. Wacker just got some more MP, so finally he's got more than 20. And he learned the ability Sleep Attack, which is great, and I will show you that in a battle. And he just got more accuracy, which is going to allow him to keep hitting birds while other characters can't. Alright, cool. So let's get exploring. Uh, what you guys will find, now that we're in the battle zone, 
Um, there's actually a lot of people who help us out, a lot of people sharing uh, supplies around. This is my general impression of it. So this person says, you must take full precautions here. Please use this if the need arises. High potions straight away. This guy over here, maybe we didn't speak to yet, but they're all going to give us lots of supplies and equipment. So here we were ambushed, uh, and Wacka has now learned a new ability, that is Sleep Attack. Dark Attack makes enemy miss, Silence means they can't cast spells. Sleep Attack is a new, very powerful ability that will send enemies to sleep. So we'll try and use it on this big, scary guy here. And now he cannot use any of his turns. I believe it will send him to sleep for, what, three turns or so? Really, really powerful, fantastic uh, thing. I would recommend anybody to take advantage of it while they can. And also, it unlocks a lot of like cool animations on on mobs that you wouldn't usually see. So like every mob in the game has got like a special animation for when they're asleep, unless they're immune to sleep. And as I explained, uh, maybe I didn't explain actually. Maybe that was in the like the the dud recording. But basically, the way the game works is it will let you unlock new abilities. Does Oren have any ice strike stuff? No, he doesn't. Alright, well I guess lightning strike's fine, it shouldn't really change anything. So uh, basically the way the game works is, it will teach you new abilities, and those new abilities tend to be effective on enemies in the area of when you'd learn it, and bosses. But then as the game progresses, like sleep is crazy overpowered, what if you could just keep chain sending bosses to sleep? It would just be stupid, right? So they actually, uh, you, in my opinion, overuse this, but the truth is, in Final Fantasy X, enemies tend to... Will Wacker kill this? I really hope he does. Oh, uh, yeah, okay, he, he did, thank god. Uh, they really start to overuse the fact that enemies can become immune to stuff. It sucks, it really does. Uh, so, I would make use of the skills as much as you can when you can. Because there will come a point where you can't, like, delay attack. Delay attack is so powerful on Titus, so powerful. You, like, haste your entire team, keep using delay attack on a boss, it never gets a turn. So strong. So, uh, what well, their answer to that is they just make him immune. Um... And it does suck, especially for like the super boss in the game. There's really not much depth to those outside of hey grind a whole fucking ton, just so that you can kill them, and because they just basically eliminate mechanics. So anyway, we do have something to consider here, and that's the fact that this guy is asleep. So if we physically attack him, he will wake up. So we can have Kamari say lance at it, and he'll stay asleep. And there you'll see he actually learned another ability. That is fire breath. We could have learned this back on the Mihan High Road, but I wanted to wait until we had Sleep Attack to do it. It was one of those really weird, specific things I wanted to do. I was like, oh, I can send an enemy to sleep and then lance it and stay asleep and I can learn a new overture. It would be amazing. So yeah, that's uh, Kamari's new thing. Finally, the guy wakes up, but oh look, it's Wacker's turn. Ah, oh look, Wacker's out of MP, typical. And that is because, uh, no, no, well, it's just because we've used it a bit. I actually haven't saved since the last episode, funnily enough. Still haven't done it. Um, so anyway, Wack uh, Kamari's now got this ability. It's called Fire Breath. We'll uh, demonstrate on the enemy. As he starts to move down Lulu's grid and gets more magic power, it will do more damage. But this would damage every enemy on the screen. So it's like it's an AoE ability. So if that didn't look too impressive, it is AoE. Um, and of course, he's not been on her path yet, so it doesn't look so good. But yeah, so he's going to take a bit of damage there. Wacker should kill this soon. Wacker would be dark attacking. I mean, Kamari can dark attack. But it's going to kill it anyway, so whatever. And there you go, that's uh, that's the new abilities we've learned. Uh, Yuna did actually learn a new one as well, called Life. Life uh, brings enemies back, uh, enemies brings allies back to life. It's basically a phoenix down that you don't have to use. Um, like, in terms of an item. Really strong, sort of undervalues phoenix downs. I was going to talk to you, wasn't I? He says, uh, stay alert during your trip, I hope this helps. Gives you an ether. Now, none of the items you get here, they're all missable, but they're not particularly amazing, so don't worry too much. Excuse me, Lady Summoner Yuna? Yes. The command center. Maester Seymour requests your presence there, ma'am. Thank you. Take that road to the command center. It's not far. We're still in the midst of preparations this way. Sorry. Wow, so there's two ways up, so we have to go the long way. We were just going to cut through, for the record. Okay, let's look at our map. We were just going to cut through. Like, this isn't really any of our business. I mean, it's very interesting. Are they going to be able to kill Sin? It's really interesting. Kind of nerve-wracking, too, I've got to say. This is one of the bits where I love the plot. Um, but, yeah, we were just going to go on. You know, we've got to go. We're just going to go to the Temple of Jose. You guys heard that word earlier? But, uh, no, apparently we're being waylaid now. So, class goes here. I'm just doing my job. And um, if we try and walk past him... Oh, that was a brutal hit from Kamari there. That was nuts. We try and walk past him. No, not this way. That way. 
I guess I'm not good at explaining. Hey, the dude, get some confidence. Jesus, you're not very good at explaining. What are you talking about? No, 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 give me items. The Crusader supplied us with some goods. Here you go. Two Phoenix Towns. So yeah, you can't go. That's the, that's the main way through the story. There's actually some chests over there, some fun stuff, but I can't talk to you guys about it because we can't go there. Good day, lad. <laughs> Sneak past the guards, I did. Yeah, <laughs> this has got to be for me the first time I kind of liked him. Like, he's he leaves a sour taste in your mouth, doesn't he? He's like, oh, okay, I don't like him. He's like, yeah, yeah, snuck past the guards, love it. So now he actually sells us some weapons. And some pretty nice ones, too. Not just yet, you'll notice that most of these are kind of meh. Some interesting stuff, this light bracer has slow ward on it. Uh, slow isn't even really something we've encountered so far, but you know, there's some there's some weird things, SOS Null Frost, and that's kind of what a worker is, you know, in terms of items, he'll sell you good items and whatever, but uh, weapons, he can sell you some interesting stuff. A fortune with Operation Meehen prices, and you lad, you get a discount, I owe you one, eh? There you go. Welcome to Arrakis. So now we actually, we can't give him any more money. Yeah, that was really our last opportunity on the old road. And the prices you see here, that my prices, uh, like this ice brand, are much cheaper than they otherwise would be. If I hadn't given him any money, uh, it would have been over a thousand gil or whatever. So, you know, if you're going to take a lot of advantage of stuff that this guy has to sell, then it's a great idea to invest on him. Uh, like this magic bangle here, for, this magic bangle, for example. This would actually be really nice for uh, Lulu, don't you think? But uh, I'm not going to buy it because he's going to sell something much better very shortly and I need the money. So there's a new enemy here. Uh, we saw some flans out in, uh, what's it called? Uh, Besaid. And now there's a new flan here that you guys can see. I'll just show you uh, what it looks like. It's a thunder flan, so we want to cast water on it dealt with uh, and then we're just gonna flee need to get to a save sphere very very badly we're 16 minutes in and in terms of geography i've moved like two inches across the world there we go sweet we got it <laughs> nice uh yes we will save okay there's a, a, scared, a scared looking person here there is increasing fiend activity this may not be much help but thank you very much so this person gives us a high potion uh, and we have some interesting stuff here so for some reason in this area of the world there are these weird like water platform things. I like them a lot. Uh, this is one of those areas of the game that you travel to in the main story. But when you get to end game, the, you know, the final stuff, there's actually very little reason to return here. There's not that much going on. Um, so enjoy it while it lasts, you know. Ah, oh, and look, here we go. This is a Garuda. This was a boss fight early on in the game. I guess you could sort of consider it to be a boss fight. We're now in a position where we can fight these things randomly. And we got a lot of things we can use. So delay attack here is going to... Slow this guy down, and oh look, he's not going to be able to use his ability. Kamari can start doing stuff. He, Kamari can throw the dark attack out. We don't have to rely on Whacker anymore. Lulu can start casting Thunder. These guys don't actually have a specific elemental weakness, but you know. So Titus's overdrive's up. Once again, I'm going to use it straight away. Check this out. Don't pay attention. Don't hold, save it for bosses or anything for me. Just use it. And down he goes. Still takes a little while to kill him, you know. I actually think these ones are stronger than the first one we fought in Besaid. But I like that design, you know. Introduce a really difficult enemy as a boss and then a ra random encounter later. So simple, but it makes you appreciate how, more, how much more powerful you are. How much smarter at the game you now are. It's funny, these enemies are actually kind of rare and I've just got two encounters with them in a row. They are, are most likely to attack you in the high regions of this place, like towards the end of the road. And I've just found two in the most southern area. At the end of the game, you can, like, start capturing monsters and, uh... Wait, 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 come back, Elmer! Are you... No, wait, are you... Let's see what... No! It's okay, we'll be able to talk to her in a second. So there's a guy over there with a chest next to him. Some more new enemies here. So, uh, we got a lizard. These are our, um... This is a raptor, sorry. These are, uh, Titus's domain. Resistant to magic, you can't kill him with Lulu. Wacker doesn't have enough strength, in theory, to kill him. Uh, Titus got the overkill because they're weak to ice, and I'm wielding an ice weapon right now. So here's Kamari, uh, and Kamari, in theory, is just as good as Auron. He's got he's got piercing stuff and a lot of strength. So there you go, overkilling that enemy in one shot is fantastic. I've been fleeing from a lot of matches here. And finally, water on this guy. Ah, see, now Lulu, maybe that's a sign that Lulu's a little bit underpowered. Oh, God, no, it's because I used the wrong friggin' element. <laughs> I'm such an idiot. Jesus, okay. See, look, he's, oh, is she almost dead? Can we score, score a cactar kill? 35 health? I don't think she's going to do 35 damage. All right, now, hold on, hold on. Here's something we can do. Yeah, 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 fire. All right, Titus, cheer. Oh, no, no, not, not fleet, not fleet, cheer. All right, this is going to buff Lulu's strength. 
Which in which basically means it's buffing her Cactar. Here we go. Go, Cactar, go! Ah, oh, only 11! Oh, well, whatever. Let's, let's finish him off. So, Yuna could be curing. I'll actually cure the team of Kamari now, because, hey, why not? That will be very useful later on in the game, by the way. I'm just trying out there. All right, this guy here, he says... A summon is entourage. Please, accept this. Ten potions. Thank you. Not going to be too useful. After the operation, my compadres and I are headed straight to Luca. It's going to be a blast. We've already reserved a place and everything. That confident are you? Do you think Yevon will take us back if we succeed? I, I mean, they should, right? All right, so we've got a chest here with a thousand gil. Very nice. That's going to help us shortly with our expensive purchasing. And again, look at the map, right? There's a save sphere down below us somewhere. How do we get there? Well, we can't. Not for a long time. It's a little like that ruin we saw in the Mihin High Road. And again, you know how I told you guys many times there's two stories going on at once here? The, 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 like, the secret story we really have no understanding of right now, it ends down there in that pit. There's actually a really significant lore story thing that's going on in that pit that um, is in some ways really tied to Tidus. Tidus, who has no idea of what's going on, is like really significant for his story like really significant and it's awesome to me that it's going on and he's totally oblivious it's like the uh, the fifth element where I think it's the fifth element anyway where there's like those two characters really big characters that don't even meet each other throughout the entire story it's not the same deal here anyway so silence attack I just demonstrated actually works on those elementals and this thing here is a new type of enemy it's an imp I don't think we fought any of these before were there some in Kilika? I'm not sure uh, this is called a Gandarua who are aerial they're resistant to magic they're weak to water so, uh, I just attacked it with lightning, which meant it survived. Oh my god, here we go. Alright, we're going to score a kill the Cactar here. It's going to happen, people. Now, the way we're going to do this is the Cactar's going to miss because um, that's an evasive enemy. But, Wacker can cast Aim, which is going to raise Lulu's accuracy. She only needs to do one damage. Alright, she gets two shots. Alright, attack number one. Go, 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 go. Ah, oh, what is that? It clearly hit him in the crotch. Okay, we're going to cast aim. And one more. Go, 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 go. Oh, such a disappointment. Everyone's wondering why I bother. And I'm wondering it myself now. Okay, we're going to swap to an ice strike scout. And we are going to... I mean, can Titus hit it? Yeah, there you go. So you eat. Titus is fairly accurate already because otherwise he wouldn't be able to hit like the lizards and raptors and stuff. There you go. <laughs> if I leave that fight in. <laughs> I know that it's not going to be a particularly long episode otherwise. Alright, so yeah, there's that place down there. Nothing we can do about it right now. Uh, we can interact with her. We've been expecting you. Please proceed to the command center. No worries, Lucille. The presence of a maester and a summoner is great for the troops' morale. Myself included. Thank you for being here, my lady. Depending on the way things turn out, we might suffer casualties. In such an event, we would be grateful if you could perform the sending, my lady. Oh no, not another sending, not that creepy stuff. We may have to fight here as well. Stay alert. Oh my god, really? We may have to This really is a bit of a battle zone right now. Okay, she's walking on, we get a remedy from this chest. Most of the items in this area are rather straightforward until you get right to the end where there's a, a hidden Albed primer that could be otherwise easy to miss. Watch and weep, Crusaders! Wow, that's some dialogue I don't think I've heard before. So here's a nice little combo here. I've summoned Valifor, and I already have Darkness on this enemy. So I'm using Boost while he's got Darkness because that's going to boost my overdrive, but I'm guaranteed to not take any damage uh, because he's got Darkness, and I'm probably going to evade each time. Really, really handy tactic, and later on when you can teach your Aeons uh, specifically moves of their own, um, then it's a really wise idea to teach them Dark Attack, just so that you can take advantage of that kind of thing. So anyway, uh, yeah, I'm summoning Valifor here. She's going to get a little bit wounded, but it's mostly to charge her overdrive, as I've just done, and I'm going to dismiss her. Now, I don't know whether I've really explained this, so Valifor's weak. After battles, she doesn't instantly go back up to full health. That doesn't happen. And neither can I use Kamari or Yuna to heal her in the menus after battles. What happens is va uh, Aeons either fully regen at save spheres, which is what happens 99% of the time. But say you're in a situation where there are no save spheres, they, they just heal very slowly as you participate in battles. Like, after each battle, they heal a bit more and a bit more and a bit more. And it's one of those, like, quirky smaller mechanics you really never have to play into ever. But, uh, you know, it's there. Oh, so uh, Lulu just got a new weapon there called the Magical Mog. 
Uh, and this thing has got um, plus three percent, so we'll go with that. I believe that's just going to be a Moogle, but that boosts the power of her of her black magic. And what more can you ask for there? If it was white magic, it would boost to it too. But as well. okay, you've got the same dialogue as before, and I didn't need to come back towards the camera there. Whatever. Ah, here's another t new type of enemy, and I believe this is the last new enemy of the area. So you probably won't have to see any more random encounters after this one, guys. So uh, what we're going to do here is we are going to bring Wacker in. To hopefully one shot this guy. Uh, no, 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 that guy. Okay, so he's weak to water. Whatever, you should kill it. Come on, Waka. Good job. He only just is killing it, but he did manage to kill it. All right, so we've done that, and now what we're gonna do is bring. Uh, I don't know what I want to do here. I, okay, I do, I do, I do. Right, so if we have Auron attack this thing, I'm really concerned about this because this could get me killed. Uh. Alright, so basically this enemy, it says at the top that it occasionally counters with pollen, which induces sleep. So, uh, let's attack him. Alright, now it didn't happen. Now, if you physically attack those enemies, they can send your entire team to sleep. And because the Fungwars and this Fire Elemental here only cast spells, it means you're asleep for a really long time, and there's a very good chance that you can game over from it. A really good chance you can game over from it. So you have to be careful, especially if you've not been grinding and training and stuff. So there are a few ways around it. Number one is to kill all the other enemies in the area before fighting these. So that if you do get sent to sleep, there's only one enemy hitting you until eventually you wake up. But the other thing is sleep attack. Well, do you know, uh, if you use sleep attack, it's impossible for him to counter because he falls asleep. So you go. Down he goes. And we've got Lulu on the field. Now, these enemies here cast fire on you. These fungars, they cast fire on you. So you might think, ah, oh, that. Well, so what are they weak to? They look like plants. So maybe they're weak to fire. But then they're casting fire on us, so maybe they're weak to Blizzard. And it's, again, it's shifting things up. It's like, it's not so easy as, oh, it just looks like it's lightning so clearly it's water. They change it slightly. Uh, obviously, if you have sensor like I do, it becomes trivial. It's 1.5 times damage from fire damage. So they're plants. You can cast fire on them and blow them up. So there you go. And again, because it's magic, there was no chance he was going to wake up from that. So there you go. That's, uh, that's the collection of enemies. Oh, it's Shalinda again, hey. In the end, I wasn't able to stop them, as you can see. But seeing their fierce determination, I couldn't just sit there. So I decided that I would do everything in my power to help them. See, I don't know. Okay, I like her a bit more from that. Truly, I know nothing of the ways of fighting, but I do know some white magic. I'm hoping that will be of some use to them. Like, just the ignorance and stupidity of a person thinking that this huge operation that has been going on for a long time, since we've even been in Spira, preparing for this, she could come up at the last minute and convince them to stop. Let me remind you guys of something. Way back at the start of the game, I actually cut this out of, like, episode 3. At the start of the game, when you first meet Wacker on the beach, Luzu and Gata are down on the beach too. And I did this whole thing where I was like, oh, they're on the beach. That won't be explained for a while. Why were they on the beach? The answer to that question is because they, why were they even on Besaid? They're not from Besaid. Why were they there? The reason they were on Besaid was to collect Sin Spawn. That's the plot. That's the, uh, the, the their goal, right? Their plan. They're collecting Sin Spawn to try and lure Sin over. Wacker told us in Killika, they always, Sin always comes back for his Sin Spawn. What happens if you bring a crap ton of them all in one location? Well, they're trying to trap it. So Luzu and Gata were on the beach because Sin had been sighted in the area. I mean, we knew he was in the area. He just dragged us away from Riku and onto Besaid. So they were looking for those Sin Spawn. Think about back in the forest as well at Kilika. What were the what were the Crusaders doing? It's all Sin Spawn. Think about the boat that we were on and the cargo that was in the boat. That was a Sin Spawn on the boat. It's pretty pretty creepy, right? So yeah, uh, and now she just thinks, oh, I can tell him to stop. No, lady, this has been in progress for a long time. We haven't even seen like the the Albed side of things. Supposedly the Albed have been helping them out. We haven't even began to see that. Is there anything I can do to help you? So anyway, she says she's a white mage, uh, and we can actually have her heal us. <sighs> and she makes kind of like sort of sex noises-ish from casting the spells. Um, <laughs> we'll ignore that <laughs> and just uh, continue on. But that will fully heal everyone. I don't know whether it includes your Aeons or not. But it will fully heal everyone, and uh, it's good to take advantage of it while you can. This isn't quite as long as the Mehen High Road, I would say. But this this area we're in, the valley, the Mushroom Rock Valley, uh, it's, a, it's, a, it's a long one. So, uh, we got ambushed there. I'll explain something to you guys as well. 
The chance of you getting ambushed in this game depends on your character's speed. Speed doesn't just depend on the ATB window and like the turns people get, but it's speed too. And uh, that's pretty cool in my opinion. I quite like that. It means that if you're under leveled, uh, not only are you going to struggle killing bosses and stuff, but you're going to keep getting ambushed in fights and possibly die there too. It's all uh, quite well worked out. So anyway, another high potion from that chest. That's the last item in this area. Finally, we see Elmer. We've seen so much of Nasil lately, but not much Elmer. And we'll flee away from there. No worries. We got 4,000 gil. I think that's enough. Lady Summoner, what are you doing here? Hey. Well, with your guardians near, you shouldn't have anything to worry about. Well, hopefully. It sounds like this is going to be a war zone in a second. She's wandered off, so we're not going to get any more dialogue from her. Okay. Uh, man, and another uh, another friggin' battle. I, I gotta say, when I was replaying this game, I did sort of feel like the encounter rate is higher than I remembered it being. But yeah. Uh, why do they even want us up at the precipice, guys? I don't know. Yuna's gonna say something in a second that I agree with so much. Like, about us being here. It just doesn't feel right, does it? Like... No. All right, this guy here. He says, give this to the Lady Summoner and grant us your help when the time comes. I mean, I get it that she's kind of there for morale. That guy gives you an X potion. That's pretty sweet, actually. A whole X potion. Did I mention in the Chocobo a fight that I was tempted to throw an X potion at the boss? Heal it up to max. Well, it would have healed it by 9,999 health. That's the cap. You can break through that cap and stuff later on, but I'm getting ahead of myself. Alright, so in this area here, make sure you focus on the different options you have. Now, the uh, red triangle is going to try and get you to go one way, but do check out different areas on the map. There's some items you're going to want to collect. You don't want to miss some of this stuff. Uh, first, there's the X potion from the dude you can talk to. From here, there is a chest just down here, which gives you a serene armlet. This is equipment for what? Kamari? Yeah, Kamari. Uh, Dark Ward and Berserk Ward. So there's a stat in this game called Berserk. We're not actually going to be getting Berserked by stuff for, like, ever. Like, a really, really, really long time. So it's weird that they give it to us. Again, I don't know why it's their, like, old design or something. Maybe there were enemies here that used to Berserk. I think it's sort of an underused status effect in this game, actually. So we're not going to equip it. We don't want to equip it. But that is absolutely something cool that we can sell. And again, over here on the left, there is something extra you can go to. This is for an Albed Primer that is very sneakily hidden on the floor. It's one of those video game logic things, right? If you've gone to an area and it feels like a dead end, make sure you check it because there's probably a reason for that dead end to exist. I remember just sort of helping my stepdad get through Zelda Skyward Sword. Like I'd never even played the game, but he just didn't sort of twig because he, he's an older man. He didn't quite twig, you know, some really sort of basic things about video games that included something like that. He was like, oh, I went all the way over there and it was just a dead end. And then he wanders off and gets lost miles away. And then it's like, well, hold on, no, no, go back, go back, check out that dead end. And then you realize, oh, yeah, I missed something really small at the dead end. So yeah, there is a, uh, there's an Albert Primer there. We're now on 10 Primers. Not bad. Doing pretty good. We got another title. And here's the area I now would expect to be fighting Garudas. I'd now be expecting this because these guys, um, I'll be right back. We're sort of higher up and they're giant birds. And that's just the way the game's code works. You're, they're more likely to find us here. Uh, what else have I missed? Doesn't look like I've missed anything else. So, uh... Do we want to get on the pad? And how much higher can we climb? Turns out not too much higher. Don't worry about that too much. Uh, we can still get random encounters here. But look, a safe sphere. We're at the end of the path. Thank God. That big elevator there. Now, if you're playing along with me, don't climb that elevator just yet. It's sort of like a point of no return. Like, shit will hit the fan once you go up there. So, uh, speak to this person if you want an item, I believe. Uh, they say, we've secured the command center perimeter, but please take this as a precaution. Gives you a mega potion. Super useful. Thank you very much for that. Why only you, sir? I want to fight too. Orders are orders. I'm not a cadet anymore, sir. Let me go with you and I'll prove it to them. Guarding the command center is important too, you know. But I came all the way from Besaid to fight Sin, sir. I know, but an order's an order to your post, Crusader. But, sir! I never really liked him that much, but I do feel kind of bad for him. Like, he, this whole time, he's been so enthusiastic. I mean, really, he's been in the story a lot now. And he's just been denied that? I mean, personally, as a coward, 
Okay, as a coward, I would totally be happy with that. I don't want to fight, but uh, you know, as uh, from another perspective, we can totally see, you know, that's stripped him of his honor. What's up, dude? Optional conversation here, but really good one. They let you through, huh? Hmm. Gata deserves better. At least there's no chance he'll get hurt. Why are you guys fighting anyway? Aren't the almighty outbed machina enough? They still need some time to get them ready. Our job is to keep Sin at bay till they're done. <clears throat> wow, Waka seems pretty annoyed. Waka. I might not get another chance to say this. It's about your brother. Luzu, no! What? I'm the one who convinced him to enlist. <sighs> I'm sorry. When we used to play Blitz together, Chapu used to say... He say that when we won the cup, yeah, he proposed to Lulu. And then one day, he goes off and becomes a crusader, just like that. <sighs> Chapu also said to me that being with your girl is good. But keeping Sin far away from her is better. Lu, you knew? Luzu told me before we left. <laughs> she hit me too. All crusaders in the vanguard are to assemble on the beach. That's my cue. Luzu! Don't die out there! <laughs> so you can hit me more? Lots, lots more! <gasps> Su Luzu! Please! Please don't go! I have to, Yuna. Let him go. The man has already chosen his path, as you did when you became a summoner. <sighs> it would be a long time before I ever really understood the reason why Yuna let Luzu pass that day. Man, I love that scene. There is so much fucking awesome about that. Like, basically, we come in, we say, as Tidus, right? We say the first couple of lines. And have you noticed how all the other characters have totally come into the element? They're all their own people now. Like, there is... We basically step into the background for ages. There's this whole thing about the Chapu story, right, that really brings you in. And then at the end, suddenly, Yuna is just like, no, don't go in. I, I don't know, that moment Yuna steps in front of Luzi's way, it makes you realise, oh, God, yeah, Yuna's here. Jeez, what does she think about all this? And then Auron chimes at the end. Basically, everyone has something to say. And it, it really expands the universe so much more out from ourselves now. I love it so much. Ah, oh, dude. And it's, it's a pretty messed up story, too. I mean, no one comes away from that feeling good. Luzu feels like he, he, he sent a guy to his death. Wacker's, you know, sad that his brother was killed and, you know, has nowhere that he can really direct his anger. Lulu has to feel bad that, in a, in a way, like, he killed himself to try and save her. Man. And I just love all this, this backstory and depth that they have set up before the game even begins. Really, really cool. Um, and, you know, tensions are running high now as well. Jeez, we're... Oh, we're, we're coming up to it here, guys. All right, let's move on up. What the hell's gonna happen? Why do they want us at the precipice? 